Folks, glad you made it back. Credit card companies, Visa, MasterCard, and American Express, they're flagging gun sales so the government can track your purchases, essentially a, a backdoor national gun registry. In response, over 100 Republican members signed letters to CEOs of Visa, MasterCard, and American Express asking them, hey, wh why are you supporting recategorizing merchant codes? And which gun sales are you planning to flag as suspicious? Jeremy now is political commentator and content creator, Liberty Doll. Liberty Doll, well, first off, as the liberty loving Latino, I love your name. Might, might I just say that? <laughs> and, and here Thank are you. big credit card corporations playing the role of totalitarian thugs. The American Constitution says it's none of government's business what guns I have at home in my safe, but these companies are actively putting policies in place that threaten our Second Amendment rights. Should Americans, in your view, be doing business with these companies? Well, I mean, I don't really think that they should. Um, I will note that at this point so far, Discover Card has been silent, but I've talked to a few people who reached out to Discover and Discover basically said that they couldn't confirm or deny whether or not they would be using the code. But uh, unfortunately, with a lot of things with government, uh, there ends up being sort of this monopoly and there's not a lot of other companies out there that people can try to do business with. And I don't think that that's a mistake at all. It's basically Operation Choke Point all over again, except this time, because the House Oversight Committee had said that basically the Obama administration was out of line in using the government to do this directly, Congress people are instead writing letters to these companies and pressuring these companies so they can try to hide behind saying, oh, well, it's the company's choice rather than the government pressuring companies to not do business with FFLs and gun shops. Yeah, sure, sure it is. And you know what? And Discover, I can't confirm or deny whether I'm going to use your credit cards or not. <laughs> uh, meantime, the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Bureau have launched uh, Operation Reticent Recall to crack down on for, uh, forced reset triggers, which they claim can qualify as a machine gun. Recently, they expanded this operation to include, this is something that surprised the hell out of me, uh, trap components, solvent trap components which they claim can be jerry-rigged and used as a suppressor. In July, in fact, a solvent trap maker had his entire inventory confiscated by ATF, and senators wrote a letter saying, wait a minute, how, how, they, they, tell me, ATF, how can you be d d uh, raiding and stealing somebody's inventory on the premise they could be used as silencers? Is the ATF, in your view, out of compliance with the U.S. Constitution? Oh, absolutely. I mean, according to the U.S. Constitution, the ATF probably shouldn't even exist. But uh, something that I like to say is that the ATF, the rules are made up and words don't matter. If you look at the NFA, the National Firearms Act, and you look at the definitions in the NFA of what actually constitutes a suppressor or a firearm or a machine gun, most of the time, it's not even anything close to what the ATF says that it is. So the ATF right now is just making things up all willy-nilly and going door to door and confiscating things that they are changing the definition of last minute. And the solvent traps is just the newest thing. And I don't think that it's the last thing that we'll see. Unfortunately, with the ATF, historically, gun owners haven't really had a lot of recourse. Maybe this time around with the different makeup of the Supreme Court, but historically, we've mostly been out of luck. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, sadly. Liberty Doll, again, love the name. Come back soon. When we get back, folks, a judge has a